Welcome back to It's My Biz, the big show for small business. And in this week's show, we're sitting down with the owners of a startup business called Divine Catering. With us in the BizBeam are the owners, Rhoda Specker and Cecilia Ikinda. Rhoda, Cecilia, welcome back. Hi. Fantastic. And still with us, of course, our panel of biz whizzes, Francis Wright, Mike Said, and Thane Niemant. Right. Small business, Mike, is like a jumbo jet sitting on the tarmac. Lots of noise, tons of heat and energy, but not really going anywhere without any focus. No thrust. Mm. Typical small businesses, there's a cycle that happens. Starts off, if you watch over here, starts off, you have an idea. You decide you want to have a business. Shortly after that, you go through the early days. The early days are excitement. You're phoning your friends, you're talking about it. You can't believe how happy you are. Then you get a few contracts, and all of a sudden you reach a we can do anything stage. I also call it the PAYE stage. And that stands for planes, automobiles, yachts, etc. Because most business owners go and buy stuff that they shouldn't. Yeah. And then shortly after that, all of a sudden, the first signs of trouble. Contract gets cancelled. You suddenly realize things aren't going your way. And then what happens is you slip off into a dip. And that's where businesses sit and wallow. They're not sure where to get their business. And after they've been there for a while, they suddenly realize it's decision time. I've got to change this business. And if they make the right decisions, that's when they start the hard work. All the stuff they should have done in the beginning without the excitement, they start doing that. And if you can break through that, I can promise you that's where the reward is sitting. Learn to identify when you're in the dip, make that decision as soon as possible. But then, Francis, sometimes it's about stepping back and sort of working out the viability of the idea to start with. That's right. Business owners should make sure that their idea is an opportunity. A lot of people put savings and invest a lot of money and effort into ideas that will never actually pan out to be an opportunity. Put your idea through three filters. Number one is the operational filter. You must actually make sure that it is physically possible to deliver what you're selling. The second one is your marketing. And the third one is financial. It's important to make sure that you can deliver it in a market-related way while still making a profit. Then, sisters with a passion for food, you think everything's gonna be smooth sailing, not so. Even though you're sisters, I think you need to implement a agreement that governs your relationship internally. You need to agree what your salaries are gonna be. You also need to agree, what are you gonna do with the surplus money in your account? Have an agreement as to who does what. And then lastly, the finish. What happens? if one of you wants to leave that business voluntarily? What happens if one of you pass away? So write down the ifs and what you're gonna do and then sign the document, get a witness if you like, until you can draft a full comprehensive agreement by an attorney. Then there are alternative ways to sourcing funding to get ideas off the ground. Maybe you could suggest some? Have you thought about swapping your services? In other words, instead of paying the gentleman that transports your equipment, tell him, can we bake you a cake every Friday for your staff? Start up a little training and consulting business because that really doesn't cost too much capital. Have a cooking course. Have a look for angel investors. Now, an angel investor is somebody that's got a bit of money that's looking to invest in a, in a business like your own. But an interesting one that I've recently come across was this thing called crowdfunding. Imagine if you went onto your Facebook or your Twitter page and you said, here's my business, and you stipulate a one-page document. Anybody that donates up to 100 Rand, for example, will get a free cupcake. And anything above that, you'll provide a meal for two. They need to know that you're trustworthy. So why don't you get that free credit report that you're entitled to? Mm. Go look at the credit bureaus, they'll send you a free credit report, get some testimonials from your suppliers, put all of these into a document. So when you go and apply for this informal funding, the people will actually know who you are. So Mike, what do they do to, to sort of know exactly what they should be charging and, and what's, what's too high or too low or what's right in the middle? Ladies, the biggest concern I have with your business is you don't know what your gross profit is. You're not sure how to charge, how much to charge, how much things are costing you. You need to get some assistance in this hand. Get hold of a company called idealstockcontrol.com have some software installed, learn how to use it, and control your food cost. Really good words. Now, Francis, if you don't understand what your client needs, there's just no way to meet the expectation, is there? 
build a, a questionnaire of exactly what to ask your customer. Once they filled in that questionnaire and you know exactly what they want from you, brainstorm ideas around that. Once the, you've decided with the customer exactly what it is and you've finalized the plan, then document it again. And off that, you can do a quote. I also think that you ladies need a mentor. You need someone to mentor you. Someone that's been in the business a long time. You'll go through costing, you'll go through pricing, everything you need. Most small businesses really do need a mentor. Someone who's retired, someone can assist them, give a bit of their time, you will grow tremendously from it. What do they need to think about in terms of operating budget? The higher your gross profit, the more funds you're going to have available to pay for your operating expenses. Those are things like rent, water and lights, salaries and wages, telephone. Those are fixed costs. If your gross profit's not meeting your needs, you've got to change something. Either you've got to change the pricing or you've got to change your expenditure. Mike, let's talk about the corporate identity for this business. For small businesses, the important thing is to appear bigger than you actually are. And that's where corporate identity comes in. Proper logo, proper business cards. Build yourselves a small little network. All small businesses can do this. Find a couple of people, someone who does wedding dresses. Mm. Every time they go to the lady for a wedding dress, she says to them, do you have a caterer yet? Call Divine. When people come to you, say to them, do you have a photographer yet? Call my friend. Well, because we're talking startups, this discussion could go on for days. So much to think about when you start a business, and I'm sure your heads are buzzing with ideas and you can't wait to get back and implement them, yeah? Yes. Well, we all know that behind everything we do here on It's My Biz stand the amazing people who make things happen. I'm talking about NetBank, and now it's time to hear some truly valuable entrepreneurial advice in our NetBank Biz Tips. The weekly slot where Spong is sending Gunze of NetBank passes on some real biz wisdom. But there's another reason that you really need to take a listen to this if you're an entrepreneur. That's right, it's because it's time for our final competition of this year's series. As you know, our final prize of the season is up for grabs, a fantastic NetBank financial fitness package for your business that includes two years free transactional banking from NetBank, one day's consulting with Lauren Fleisser from Trutrepreneur to assess and identify the challenges that you're facing in your business and gives you a practical strategy to correct them. And a Samsung RC510 laptop, specially designed for durability and hardiness for the entrepreneur on the move. That's truly amazing. And as you'll remember, we've been giving away one of these packages every week during this series of It's My Biz. So if you want to have one last stab at winning our last one, all you have to do to go into the final draw of the season and to stand a chance of winning this valuable NetBank financial fitness package for your business is listen to the NetBank biz tip coming up and then send us your answer to the question that follows. Check this out. Many entrepreneurs, especially those starting out, often do not think about the eventuality, either through death or disability, that may bring into question the continued financial fitness of that business. You need to minimize the risk in the event of untimely death by ensuring that owners of the business have got their will in place, which minimizes undue delays in the winding down of the estate. Hard as it is to imagine a future for your business without yourself, it must be taken into account if all you're working for is not to be subjected to unnecessary forces of stress. Now that's certainly a tip that every entrepreneur will find useful. If you want to stand a chance to win that last remaining NetBank financial fitness package for your business, then all you have to do is send us the answer to this question. In the case of death, what can be put in place so that there is no unnecessary delay in handing over the reins of the business as the estate is being wound up? SMS your answer together with your name, business name, and business registration number to 40320. We'll be accepting answers for only an hour after the end of the show, so get your fingers on those buttons right now. Please remember, terms and conditions apply, and you can check them out at either netbank.co.za or simply biz.co.za. Congratulations to all our winners this season. In the meantime, though, don't go away, because when we come back, we'll be setting out for Kempton Park to see just how the solutions our biz wizards have put on the table can be put into practice.